Safiri salama msalimu maulana Tutaonana badai hey, Safiri salama msalimu maulana Tutaonana badai Hey everyone, this is Josh and I'm on Learn is Say So. Finally, finally. Yeah! <laughs> yo, it's a fancy yo, mic. Yo. <laughs> okay. Yo, Karibu Sana Learn is Say So, Josh thank man. You, thank hey, you, thank you. You're so jacked, I didn't know you could get it. You know, you just threw me off. Nani ya lisa manga mamba inatoa nyoka pangoni? Ya mwema sina nyoka from pangoni? Umetua simba pangoni. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Yo, yo! <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to Lioness Say So. You know, um, I'm a personally I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. And um, I think you you just have this powerful voice and um your other counterpart who you work with. That you guys just have something really amazing going on for you people, you know, because your voices sync up. Just tell us what is the root of Josh or mm -hmm. Amos and Josh. Let's just start from there. Our route is pretty simple and uh, pretty much known. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. Oh, I you're welcome. I think you're in the Kata seal. Lazima <laughs> seal of Santa. Ndiyo yeah. wito tena. <laughs> Karibu yeah. sana. Yeah. He's a very good host. Nwekunyo soda. <laughs> I'm still getting fatter. But yeah. <laughs> it's okay. So, um, our, route, our route is pretty simple. Um, we met in church. Um, wow. We still serve a lot in church and that is like in chapel. So that's where we met as a duo and actually Amos and Josh um, as an idea was brought about by our party, funny enough. Okay. Because I wanted to go for a singing competition, that was Tasca Project Fame. Amos as well wanted to go for the same singing competition. Okay. Then he, our party was like, uh, our bishop, our bishop was like, you know what, uh, you guys need to go together. You guys sound uh, very nice when you guys are singing together in church. You're in so, sync. Yeah. Yeah. So he 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 brought the idea of Amos and Josh together. Uh, his name is Bishop Wendy Odendo of Life Coach Chapel. Mm -hmm. He's our life coach. Yeah, he and you are disciplinarian. In yeah. case you want to stacky Amos and Josh for anything, just go to Bishop Wendy Odendo. <laughs> so we know where to snitch. You know, you know where to stack us. So, <laughs> Basically, yeah. I do anything wrong. Yeah. So yeah, um, he worked with us for like three months daily. Whoa. Before TPF daily on a daily basis, training us on, on how to let's say uh, represent ourselves properly. Because one of the things I think stood out for Amos and Josh is just how we would carry ourselves, yeah, you know, and all yeah. that stuff. So, so that's the root of Amos and Josh. Um, we are both from we are not uh, from very musical backgrounds. Mimi Nicole, Mama Yangu Amos Kwao, but. Uh, and I represent water. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, I'm going to go to the water. Yeah. Me, 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 me. So, yeah. yes, I think that's enough background. Background. <laughs> See, yeah. Okay. Purchase. So, you you guys, um, are you, are, were you guys friends before or were you just like church acquaintances? Niade, niade, bro. And you story, Misha. Because I think for you to be in a band, mm -hmm. which, like, technically, when you're two, mm -hmm. more than two musicians, that's technically a band. Mm -hmm. You have to have some sort of, um, you know, like some personal, you know, link mm. to each other because mm. it's not easy just working with just anybody, mm. you know. Yeah. I mean, I can't just go to the studio with you. This is not just not a collab that mm. you just have to do one song, yeah. but this is somebody. It's like a partnership, you know. Yeah. So t tell me about that partnership between you and your counterpart. Yeah. This will be funny. This has never been said anywhere in an interview, but Amos and Josh was my uh, Amos was my client. I was selling suits. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah I was selling suits. That's yeah. I was selling suits and Amos was one of my first clients. You so, sell you like, yes. like like suits? Like suits, yes. Official? Suit is suit, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kilambu kwa na toka shimo za hizo vitu mbaya. Ukitaka eh, kutaka suit yenye inaka Italiano udanganya watu ni 16k na yeye tumebuy 1900. Just hala at your boy. I'm a hala I, at I my know boy. why I can get that. <laughs> yeah. Um, our church community is very interesting. There's there's that uh, aspect of we really value and treasure the aspect of community and supporting each other. Yeah. So one of the first things that happened, um, uh, and you to connect so closely with Amos, 
yes we were in we were in other we've met in other projects before ni 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 but your house singers just meet yeah, like yeah. you're called by another singer you find yourself uh -huh. together there but now um because of that aspect of supporting one another and people really getting into each other's lives um that is what life which happens basically about eh sasa si emo sale kwa na promote biashara yangu it's not like it was a must for him to do it yeah. other places to buy suits yeah. but, but uh, he he started uh, we started our relationship that way on a client uh seller basis then we grew into being more friends and uh, we have like a very tight neat kind of friendship and kwa ni wala tunasemanga ni ina sako it goes way beyond music. music we talk about everything like we know each other we buy sana we usually say uh, in our circle so ambia nanga tukitaka kuchomana we can really chomana we have a lot of truths about each other and evidences there is like so, a basic solid foundation yes. to your yeah. to your business um yes. relationship and yes. a personal relationship yes. i get that i get that completely so now let's talk about your your your, your song that made me know mm. you to okay. tell na na badai that one Ish. yo man <laughs> the <laughs> voice is also there <laughs> Yeah. So, um me personally, but they were, I want to I, I want to say thank you to you know Josh because um Tutalana Badai played a very a big a role in my life. I remember that was back in um mm. when I, when my when my husband of 9 years died. Mm. And I remember I was just uh I was just chilling in the house and there's a friend of mine who sent me a link to your song. Mm. And I remember when I heard it you know I, I sort of like could connect mm. to, to, to the emotion that I felt the moment that I was told my late husband died mm. you know and I remember th that the song itself helped me gain some healing mm. so bro I kind of owe you a hug for that I kind of owe you a hug for that you know because I'm gonna bend over because I kind of owe you a hug for that because that, that was a very Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know? Yeah, that was a very that, that was a very powerful song, you know, personally. You know, just saying that thank you so much for singing that because it helped a young widow. You know, I was lost. I was only 29 and it's like, yo man, this is it. But that song really helped me, you know, process it, you know, just to know that one day I'll see him again. Yeah. So, you might not never know who you've touched, but trust me, your music is touching somebody out there. First of all, sorry for that's that's something very huge to do with. Yeah. And I think um, loss is a subject that is very, very tough. And and people, if if you've if never if you've never lost anyone, uh, eventually you will. Like death is inevitable. It happens. It, yeah. It's inevitable. Yeah. And so for us, it was coming from a place of. It was also a place of conflict for us, even when we were writing the song, because. Um, weird emotions like you can't even uh, you can't even put a finger at what exactly you guys are experiencing at that time because we had friends a friend who committed suicide yes you were com i was convoking some friend i lost when i was a child yeah. and loss is usually just filled with a lot of questions of like course. you're wondering why why yeah. and that's why Bada is, is is a song filled with questions how it's just questions, questions and questions, yeah. and then there's just hope at the end that yeah. you will see them again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and um, just a little bit on that is just that uh, you know, like my husband died randomly, mm -hmm. so you know, like ni how only ni acha bi bi la fa you know, you didn't like tell me goodbye. Yeah. You know, you know, it's it, it's it's a very touching song, you know, and guys, man. That song coming Michelle could change life, Yako. I mean you party encouragement. Please drop a fire emoji for Amos and Josh down there, man, because you wanna appreciate them. Yeah, you know, let Thank moving so on swiftly, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now let me know about now your um now your experience in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Here you are. Uh you know, um, I know that you guys are in TPF and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now let, let's not talk about much about your being in a music competition okay. and stuff. Now let's talk about life after TPF. Okay. Now let's start from there. <laughs> life after TPF was very different because life in TPF was pre-planned. Everything was properly planned, properly yeah. scheduled. You knew you were supposed to do this at this time. Yeah. Actually, what was wrong, but in TPF we never had phones. We never had phones. 
there, was, there were no phones, there was no TV. How are you surviving? Now, your mind is totally in music. <laughs> and that was so cool. <laughs> and That's how I got fat. What? That's actually how I got <laughs> People wonder how I got fat. That's how I got fat. Because I was doing what I love and eating. Oh, and working out. So I was just doing what I was at peace. So the only focus was music and everything was planned. Now, life after TPF, you figure out that you have now to plan things for yourself. Yeah. And if if anyone never had talks with uh, with the principals or the people in charge there, um, if never if if someone never had talks with people outside the planning that was there at TPF, yeah. Utapata people usually struggled a lot once they came out because mm -hmm. you're out of that order now. You're now into the. Uh, Kenyan crazy mayhem. We know how the Kenyan industry is. Mm -hmm. You are part of it. You know mm -hmm. how crazy the Kenyan industry of course, is. It's, madness. So, it's not orderly at all. There's no order. It's just, it's a hustle. It's it's a matter of hustling. Everyone is out here hustling something for themselves. No one is giving you yeah. anything with a, like yeah, exactly. a silver spoon and you know nothing now is guaranteed anymore. It's like you're mm. standing on your own. Actually right now is when we are getting a lot of structure where people are coming up with labels and stuff like that. Mm. Um, like properly functioning labels. Yeah. Um, for the longest time there was no structure. And mm. still even in how people receive money or, or make money out of their music. Uh, the the place where we are supposed to make most money, which is your royalties, yeah. there's no structure. You you will be you'll be sent two five at some point out of nowhere, and you're like, what is the two five four? What's that mean? What is the two five four? What is the two five four? Ah, ah, burst, burst. Yo, respect the OGs. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Uh, so life was very different, but it was very defining for us. Because one thing I love about my country is it gives you an opportunity to be stable and an opportunity to be tough. Yeah. And like other countries, this is a country where you have to kunja your sleeves and fight. Mm. You know, so you end up being a very stable and very tough person. Yeah. So through our our trials and stuff like that, we are mm. we decided to place our first gig at Intercon. First ever gig after TPF, eh. we placed it at Intercom. We put a Yes. Skia. A bo 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 after that gig, and it was very daring, and, and that's what I love about the TPF process, and, and also my community, Life Coach Wangu, our Pasi, our Bishop, Nini, he, he just taught us to dream. Dream big. To dream, like you just there. It's not like we are rich kids, do you from where? No. Me, me, I'm a boy of Kibera. Me, I'm a boy of Kibera. Me, I'm a boy of Kibera. I would have mistaken you for a rich kid, honestly. No. Actually, you can't say that I'm a boy of Kibera. You can't say that I'm a boy of Kibera. But no. Me, I'm a boy of Kibera. 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 So we are just Kawaida Kenyan boys. <laughs> Kawaida church boys. Yeah. But uh, we are just dreaming and daring. And every process just allowed us to dream bigger and bigger. So after your gig ya Intercon, which was not a major success, CRT to make crazy profit, actually to link kwa Danny Serious, that's when we decided now we are kufaying with this music. Mm. Yeah, we are doing it and doing it for real. Yeah. Mm. So, what has only likuwa? To go and get your industry. So, anyway, you make it to me for us, and of course, I daddy. So, now we hear like. So, I'm Sani. <laughs> you know, I'm Sani. I'm Sani. I'm Sani. I'm Sani. I don't know what, what those guys used to say. I don't know. Where? Sipata Pomasema lyrics and Basil. The photo is a little bit of a No, I'm just okay. <laughs> Moving, on safely. <laughs> Moving on safely. So, here at Lioness, so we like to play a few games. Mm -hmm. um, so, now we, we like to touch on the personal side of stuff, you know. Okay. So, of course, you're a man, right? And a man, I don't a macho. Mm -hmm. So, I'm saying, I'm going to put a ring on it. Hey, 
hey, putting a ring on it, that's too far. Ah, ah, wait, wait. Kuona, and I'm like, she's fine. Really? Uh, Kenya, Kenya, has, Kenya has very, very good looking women. Mm. I think in Africa, to go to Sawa, we are doing very well. Because mm. Kenya is very, is very diverse. Yeah. So there are a lot of people. But one artist that I used to really crush on when I was younger was Talia. Talia Yano. Talia, I love Talia. Even her personality, I just love her as a person. Sana. See, see the hips, the... No, Talia is amazing. Like She's just an amazing human being. She's an amazing human mm. being. Wow, wow. That went a different way than I expected. <laughs> so, um, so... What if, like, have you ever met her in person? Like, if we'd meet her in person today, I mean, yeah. what, what would be your first reaction? We've, we've met a couple of times. Yeah. Actually, we've met a lot of times, and we have a lot. There are places where we've crossed paths, Mara Mob, like in gigs. Um, she, okay, I don't know if I'll be jumping the gun, but uh, we also share someone that we lost that. Yeah. That was very instrumental in our careers, and that is Bruce Odiambo. Yes. Yeah, Talia has a very deep story about Bruce Odiambo and the role that he played in her music career, and also Bruce played a very big role in our music career as Emerson Josh. So, to me, Patana Maramob, even in Bruce's place, Nini. So, we, we, we got to know each other uh, Vizuri. Mm -hmm. So, Bruce Odiambo. Big time, big time producer. Mm. You know, may he roll, may his soul rest in peace. Yeah. So tell me, who exactly is Bruce Odiambo? Because I've never met him personally as an artist. Mm. But why is he such a big deal in so many artists' lives? Like, what has Bruce done? Wasani when you want to because na tribute Zaki and guys were like talking so highly of him, you know, yeah. and um. You know, I mean, who was this guy? Bruce was, was a very, was an enigma, if I must say. But yeah. Bruce was an experience. Like, he had this tagline. It's a Bruce thing you won't understand. That was his tagline. Okay. So, <laughs> Bruce, Bruce was interest, was a very, very interesting character. Now, um, the reason why so many artists um, have, have crossed paths with Bruce uh, so many big artists, in one way or the other, Kunamali, Bruce are my influence. Bruce Kwanza, first of all, he used to say, you can't afford what he's willing to do for you. Okay. So he would do it anyway. So that, that put him in a place where he found himself supporting so many artists. So many albums have been done in his studio. He had one of the biggest studios in Nairobi, mm -hmm. Johari Club. Yeah. And um, so many albums by big Kenyan artists, from Pizza on to... Um, to Masimaira, to Sauti Soul, uh, one of the biggest collabs, Sauti Soul and, and who, yeah, some of the biggest collabs have been done uh, in, in Johari Club. So he was this, in, in, in our lives now as Emerson Josh, he was this uh, influential voice. Not just an influential person, and there's a reason why I'm saying influential voice. Because the voice you listen to kind of get you to a place where you, the voice that you have in your mind dictates how you interpret life. Yeah. And how you interpret life will determine the kind of habits you get in your life. And your habits are basically you. Yeah. So he was that voice that was so influential, especially in my life. Not just as a Muslim Josh, even in just my personal life. I wanted so much to be like Bruce. I wanted wow. to be a producer. I wanted to... I wanted so much to be like Bruce to the point that he told me he doesn't want me to be like him. Yeah. Like, at some point he was scared that I wouldn't, I would, I would carry some of some some <laughs> some things that he doesn't want me to carry. Yeah. Okay. So I really wanted to be like him, and um, it made me understand that aspect of I need to to really mind which voice I'm listening to. I need to really mind who I'm listening to. It's very important for an artist in this industry. The artist who came before us used to tell us, you guys need to look for scandals. You need to look for exciting things to do. Because they were telling us, you guys sing a lot, but us guys have more beats than me. Because us guys are in the club and streaming. And we realized, we later on got to realize, <laughs> yeah. it is not our thing. Yeah. You know, 
someone need to understand their place. Our placement as Emos and Josh, that was not our placement. Our placement was to, to do music that is hopeful, music that gets people thinking. And you, your music is you. Yeah. You can't say your music is not you. Like, yeah. That's why musicians get tired and maybe some get depressed because you're giving out a lot of yourself yeah. continuously. So um, we had to get to a place of, um, of accepting this is our area. So that's why it's hard to okay, to kunama stories there to mingi mingi up in about Emos and Josh. But you wouldn't find us pushing or looking for scandals and other stuff. And I, I love Bruce because he allowed us to just do music, to just express ourselves. Yeah. A lot of because we love live music, we did a lot of live music. There's a lot of content we did with Bruce that will never be released, unfortunately. But um but Nisao, he got us somewhere that we will we owe it to him perpetually. We owe yeah. it to him yeah. So I, I wanna ask you a very tricky question. It's okay. <laughs> so if I'm not able to answer uh, come, say, on, come, say, on, say, come on, come on, come on. No, say I didn't move by. Sequence by Sequence day. Sequence by <laughs> come on, so who do you think is mm. a better vocalist? Mm. You or Amos? Ah, that's a... That's a that's a that's a that's an easy question, very easy question, because I think it's Amos. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I've looked up to Amos for a long time, mm. even before Amos and Josh happened. What makes him I better to, than you? I used to sit and just watch Amos. I used to sing. I, I used to say like, I want to sing like that dude. First of all, singing for Amos is so effortless. I'll tell you why. It's so effortless. Amos can be sleeping here, like. To make Kuja, let's say, let's say, let's assume it's a studio. Amos, sometimes you, you find rest in very weird places because he works too much. So now, and as a Kuja, then you wake him up. He was patiako mefika. Then he will do something crazy, and you'll be like, so where did that come from? He was just there sleeping. It's not like he prepared. Me, I'm a guy of preparing. Me, I, I like. Taking my time. You like taking your time. I prepare. I plan my runs, my ad libs. Yeah. So, ile party a niya. Ako ka, ako ka hit. Ile ni we we ma ni ye ye. Kuna ile ni me songa sana. Yeah. Ni watu kumbuka. Yeah. Ikoza iki tu ni bishop anga ni enjoy sana jo iki tu. Actually, I'll share this with him. But you also manga Josh. Most of the time, you do the writing. You spend the most time in studio. But Amos will come and sing one thing, and that is all people will remember. So that was Amos. <laughs> Which is okay. We are, I, I don't mind. Yeah, you go Amos. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, hold up. Amos, why aren't you even here? Ah, ah, ah. Amos is crazy. Amos is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So, wow, you know, you know, your, 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 your gift together is very powerful. But I have to ask a very tough question at this point. Mm -hmm. Do you see you guys making it as a band, or do you think that at some point you're gonna venture as, um, you know, separate, you know, brands? Okay, what I'm about to say, I think will help a lot of people who are in groups. Yeah. I think us guys, uh, when we started, we just went with the momentum. In the Imagine AJ, where we'll be, we'll be representing, yeah. represent, not representing, like re. Yo, line in a kwanga pukata katikati and I'm presenting. Hi, Fed. Yes. <laughs> representing. Yeah. Emo, uh, Emo St. George Classic, that's Badai, Zingua, Smile. And then we'll also be releasing a classic that we've performed everywhere, but we've never released that song. Yeah. Yeah. It's called Missing You. Missing You. Yeah. Why am I giving a lot of information on this show? No, because but this yes. is like an essay so Let him release to all the way. Yeah, it's called Missing You and yeah. that is a gift to some of the, uh, all, all the all the fans that have stuck with us and have asked where is Amos and Josh, ni, 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 ni. Mm. so we are saying we've missed you. So it's yeah. called Missing You, it's a ballad, it's dope, madame. A ballad. Hey, madame, mtapenda, hey, mtapenda. Mtapenda. Mm. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Yo, guys, like, I'm so grateful I'm so grateful you guys are Thank you so much for, for like tuning in and supporting Lioness Say So all through the way. Like I said, I'm your host, Sironka the Lioness, and I said like everywhere, 
everywhere it's Ronka Lioness on Instagram if you want to reach out to the show it is Lioness say so on Instagram honey I want you to utuondoe kwa isho na your melodious sexy voice utuimbe kakitu as we go manze you know guys I want to tell you something you know it's never too late for you to start over your life no, no, ma no, no matter what you do manze start over kama it was the workout. Kwa sababu kuna vitu kadhaa mmenikuwa mnanyekea kwa DM zangu na za Sironka how do you start over? Hear from his story that him and his and his counterpart took a 5 year break. Yeah. And now they're starting over, right? Ni kwanza kama scratch tena. Yeah, pretty much. Ke, pretty. Ke, Kenyans are, are like that. We forget. <laughs> so we have to we need to okay. start button. Never Never be afraid to start the restart button, guys. Mm -hmm. So mimi kwa mimi Sironka Lioness sasa niondoke. Yo, 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 hey, Josh, Josh, take over, take over. Bye, guys. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> well, this is something that we did during the corona period, and um, yeah, you'll hear it. It's called different.